Just 50 years ago, nurses were little more than indentured servants. They worked long hours, sometimes seven days a week for very little pay. They had no say in the workplace, and union was not in their vocabulary. Today, as Ona celebrates its 35th anniversary, a great deal has changed. Because they have their own union, nurses are treated as professionals and are recognized as partners in the healthcare system. In the days when I was in training, uh, fear was the was the um, best motivator they had. Because if you didn't produce and if you didn't do things right, you were out the door. Jean Lowry graduated as a psychiatric nurse in 1951. She entered a work environment where nurses were to be seen but not heard. Uh, nurses were the. Uh, the low person on the totem pole, for example, uh, the doctors came first in the hierarchy and then the head nurses and the supervisors, the head nurses and the senior nurses and then the, the grassroots nurses, so to speak. They would complain about um, their work, the, their work, their working hours, the shift work, the low pay, the lack of, um, of prestige they had, that um, they didn't think that anybody knew what their problems were except themselves. And if you said, well, why don't you do something about it? Well, the answer was, what, what am I going to do about it? By the 1960s, Jean got involved in the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, at the time, the only professional body representing nurses. I did go to some of the meetings, but I'd never ever spoke at a meeting because I was uh, in the audience. It was, uh, it was the head nurses and senior nurses and supervisors and uh, directors of nursing that seemed to have the say there. And so I went, but I listened, I guess. Nursing organizations started to promote collective bargaining and started to teach nurses about unions. I saw it as a way of nurses helping themselves because I thought that if they be felt better about themselves and their working conditions and were pre prepared to do something about it, that basically, in the end result, it would make them a better person and a better nurse. Anne Gribben became a nurse in 1945. In 1965, she went to work for the Employment Relations Department of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. That department was trying to get higher wages and better working conditions for nurses, but employers would have none of it. Every year we'd set standards, and we'd take it to the general membership, and they would vote on it, and they would pass it. And then we'd take it back to our employers with our cap in our hand, and we'd get nothing. And so, you know, you did this year after year, and it became evident that we weren't going to get any place. Nurses were getting fed up and starting to realize that, like other hospital workers, they needed a union. In 1965, more than a thousand nurses marched on Queen's Park to demand recognition. These ladies in hats didn't want the right to strike. They wanted binding arbitration. The province refused. They dared the nurses to organize like any other workers. And so began the fight to unionize nurses, health board by health board, hospital by hospital. So then it became evident that we would have to take each group of nurses in each employer situation, have them adopt a constitution and you know, do whatever you, you should do properly to get yourself signed up as a union, and then go before the, the labor board. So it was a, a, really a very long, tedious, expensive way to go. In 1969, for the first time in Ontario, nurses went on strike. They were teachers at the Hamilton and District School of Nursing. The school's management had refused to negotiate. The nurses called their bluff. How long have you been asking for a contract? We were certified as a trade union on February the 12th, 1968, and we started negotiating shortly after that. And you've gotten nowhere? Absolutely not. What's the big issue? Is it wages or working conditions? I would say that both were big issues. What about the professional aspect of this? What do you think Florence Nightingale would have thought? 
Well, we've got a picket sign out there that says Flo was a pioneer too, so we think she'd be along with us. So this is quite a switch in the traditional or the uh, historical view of nursing held by the public. Yes, I think it's quite a switch from the traditional view held by uh, many of the public, but I think it's something that you'll see more of. Organizing went quickly. By 1973, there were more than 100 nurses' unions in Ontario, each negotiating a separate collective agreement, each fighting its own battles. But nurses wanted standardized wages and working conditions across Ontario. It was time for a single province-wide union. On October 13, 1973, the Ontario Nurses Association was born. Three months later, the Labour Board recognized the ONA as the Union for Ontario Nurses. In 1974, Ona called a meeting with the Ontario Hospital Association. The union wanted centralized bargaining and a single collective agreement for all Ontario hospitals. The OHA stalled. The nurses hit the streets. A CBC reporter said, Members of the association, formed just last October, had been picketing at several local points and around the province as negotiations went on in a series of hotel meeting rooms in Toronto for the past five days. Following status approval in January by the Provincial Labour Relations Board, the ONA now represents at least two-thirds of Ontario's nurses working in hospitals, public health units, homes for the aged, industry and the Victorian Order of Nurses. We had days of this, and that's when the nurses met and had a, a meeting and said, this took a strike vote, we're going on strike. I said, well, it's illegal. Well, they knew it was illegal, they were going to go on strike. Finally, good news came from an unexpected place, an arbitration award at the Ottawa Civic Hospital. When the arbitrator read the papers that came out saying that we were going on strike, he brought down the award the very next day. The other hospitals could no longer hold out. Ona got an 18-month agreement with a 50% raise. It was the first step towards central bargaining. Over the next dozen years, Ona went from battle to battle and from success to success. But it wasn't always easy. Nurses in public health units weren't covered by the hospital agreement and struggled to catch up. In 1976, public health nurses launched a province-wide strike to fight for wage parity with other nurses and came to Queen's Park to press their case. We don't believe that the public should be the innocent victim in uh, the settling of our disputes, so we are asking the government to give us an arbitration process. We are actually being discriminated against because our hospital nurses, our, our homes for the aged nurses, our nursing home nurses, nurses employed directly by the province have arbitration. These nurses do not, and they're forced then, in order to resolve a dispute, to take the confrontation aspect. Public health nurses did not win binding arbitration and have continued to strike for their rights. But nurses were also concerned for their patients and wanted to be recognized as professionals. In 1977, nurses at Mount Sinai Hospital documented their excessive workload. As a result, ONA won a professional responsibility clause. Now standard in ONA collective agreements, it gave nurses more control over their work and more influence over the quality of health care. By the 1980s, ONA was the fastest growing union in the country. Membership surpassed 30,000 and kept growing. In 1981, the central collective agreement covering hospital nurses was finally achieved. That province-wide bargaining model remains in place today. During the 1980s, ONA worked to make sure that that central agreement was applied fairly in all hospitals. In the nursing home and public health sectors, ONA fought to improve wages, benefits and working conditions. Provincial wage restraint laws made this difficult. Public health nurses went on strike and endured lockouts as they fought for parity with hospital nurses. <laughs> 